Hello, kings and queens. You're listening to Affirmations of Excellence, an offering of personal devotions to fuel your week. I am your guide, Ariel Ellis, and I'm so excited to create a space of encouragement and inspiration for each of you. As you begin a new year and a new decade, you are likely seeking to determine how to be your best self and how to discover the excellence within you. The person who lives a life of excellence is one who is willing to do and to dare. As living souls made in God's image, we are not called to mediocrity. We are called to excellence. Excellence is the result of a prosperous, well-lived, and fulfilled life. And this podcast is for those who sense a royal calling on your life. Those who are learning to hear God's voice and clarity and need motivation for the assignment and who want to live out his calling with excellence. Each week, we'll explore themes of everyday life and talk through ways to escape mediocrity and find true fulfillment. Thanks to each of you who tuned in to the first episode. The calls and emails and texts and direct messages. Wow, I really appreciate your support. And I'm truly grateful for the participation and for the feedback that you've given me about the podcast. I'm so glad to know that this podcast is motivating, inspiring, and stretching you to reach excellence. This is exactly what it is meant to do. This week's episode is about goals. It's still really early in the year, and if you haven't mapped out your goals for 2020, this is the perfect time to fine-tune your intentions for the year. Getting clear on what you want out of life is the most important thing you can do as you pursue excellence. So let's dive in. Kings and Queens, be sure to share, rate, and subscribe as you listen today. In the world we live in, results are usually tied to performance. Nowadays, unfortunately, good enough is enough. Half done, half-hearted, shoddy, non-committal, just enough to get by, low effort, low interest, low standard, low energy, unbothered, average attempt, smoke and mirrors, for attention and not for advancement, a failure to go all in and play full out, doing the bare minimum, less than what is required, lack and slack, all fight against the privileges that God has for his royal offsprings. The mediocrity of it all has us wondering why it's so easy to live less than. So I'm an overachiever, surprise, (laughs) but I'm a healthy overachiever. If I can do or think I want to do, I will. And that's kind of been the theme of my entire life. I mentioned in the first episode of the podcast that each year I write down my goals, pray about them and meditate on them weekly. And because we're approaching a new decade, I decided to map out my goals for the next 10 years. Now, that may sound a little aggressive or a little extra or overachieving to some. But for me, it's important to take the vision I see for myself and map it out. God has proven to me that when I establish my vision, his provisions follow. I started the practice of writing down my goals and prayers annually about 10 years ago. And I can honestly say that every goal written is accomplished by the end of the year. And if there is a goal that isn't fully completed by the end of the year and it's still in progression, I move it over to the list of goals for the year ahead because there's still work to be done. I don't give up and walk away. I keep pursuing it. I am now in a season where I am straddling between ambition and assignment, and I'm diligently seeking to discern what's what. The worth of ambition is based on a variety of things that we value. Our ambition guides us, but our assignment secures us. I've been blessed to accomplish many of the things that I set as a goal for myself. The things that I wanted to achieve have been driven by my ambition. This ridiculous, unrelenting drive that has pushed me my whole life. But as I check accomplishments off my list, I have to now reclassify my goals to determine which ones serve me and which ones serve God. It's ambition versus assignment. Your ambition is independent and indirect. Your assignment is divine and direct. I'm not saying I've run out of ambition. It still fuels me. And it fuels my goals. But assignment, assignment has taken priority of my focus 
in this particular season of life. I am intently and solely concerned about what God has assigned for me to do. And for me, that means operating less from my head and more from my heart. God's assignment for your life will be centered around something that burdens you. He creates a longing in your heart. He strikes a fire in your belly. Am I seeking excellence God's way or am I selfish in my approach? Have I set goals that ultimately honor him or do they support only me and my wishes? Is my ambition creating anxiety in my mind or is my ambition causing my spirit to be troubled? Some sacrifice, some surrendering, and even some struggle is healthy in pursuit of a God-ordained goal because it is given by assignment. It's because goals should be intentional. They are not a passive possibility. They're clear, concise movements that require attention and investment. A few specific areas of life that you should create goals for include personal development. As a dweller in the information age, what would you like to learn or experience that could expand the depth of your knowledge? Professional. As your career presents unlimited potential, what are the specific targets you want to achieve year to year? Financial. As you plan for the future, what kinds of commitments and investments should you make with your money? Family and lifestyle. As you assess your everyday life, what would you like your home environment and close relationships to consist of? Health and wellness. As you get older, what kinds of decisions will ensure the likelihood of your mental, physical, and emotional well-being? Spiritual. As you seek excellence, what does it mean to maximize who God has called you to be? Take a second and think about it. Here are a few ways to pursue excellence in your goals for the year. First things first, get focused. You have to eliminate the distractions. Make a short list of priorities, and once one priority is completed, add another to the list. Chances are your goals are not just for you, but to make a difference in the world around you. People are watching you and depending on you. Know that your goals will set you apart as an example. As you set goals and mark them off, people will want to know that you accomplished them and how. So set the bar high with your goals people are going to follow in your footsteps. Write down your goals. This may sound obvious, but sometimes we have things in our heads and our hearts and we never put them into words. The old-fashioned way of writing them down with a pen and paper is vital. There's power in putting pen to paper. Writing creates a permanency of words. And if that's too old school for you, then take your phone and type your goals out into an app or the memo or notepad. And sometimes I like to use that function on my phone and I'll go to a Google Doc from time to time when I want to detail the strategies that will help me reach a specific goal. Schedule your goals. We always hear the question, where do you see yourself in five years? So plug those goals into a five-year plan that covers specific aspects of your life. Reverse engineer and work backwards. Create benchmarks for the time frame you'd like to incrementally move toward your goals. Establish deadlines to ensure you're not delaying completion. Make your goals measurable. Schedule time to plan them. Mark time on your calendar to think deeply and set your goals in stone. Don't rush. Think through the process. Give yourself time. Specifically say how much weight you want to lose, how much money you want to make, how much time will you spend at your job until you move on to the next one. As you create measurement for your goals, you will honestly and eagerly assess how they can be met. Your desire for excellence moves you to build a sturdy foundation on your goals. You may identify your goals based on reaching short-term success or you develop goals that could have a long-term effect on your life. Some of us will aim high and achieve quickly. Others of us will move slowly and carefully. A key element for developing your goals is using the lessons learned from the successes and the mistakes of others. It also includes surrounding yourself with like-minded people who inspire your goals and keep you accountable for achieving them. That means cherishing old friendships and creating new ones. The foundation for goal setting should include patience, Don't rush the results. Work to maintain enthusiasm on the path toward your goals. When we set goals, 
Our enthusiasm for excellence is infectious. So enjoy the process and keep a positive outlook along the way, no matter how long it takes. You should also aim to always help others while attaining your goals. Be generous with your relationships and with your resources so that you can experience the blessing of sowing and reaping. You will build a large reservoir of goodwill as you help others meet their goals. When you dominate your goals, you unlock your excellence. Kings and queens, God wants to provide us with a kind of peace, stability, joy, and hope that is beyond what we could imagine. For that to take place, We have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. We have to get honest about our feelings, our thoughts, our fears, our motives, and our needs. Next week's episode is about desires. And we're going to get really transparent about all of those things that I just mentioned. And it actually may test some of the ideas that we've shared about goals on this episode and make us think deeper about the desires of our heart and how they got there. Opening up about the desires that drive our goals can be hard to address, not just because the answers are elusive and difficult to express, but digging deep down into your heart to search for real goals makes you strip away the barriers and reveal what is hurting and hindering you from pursuing big important things or even making small incremental changes. Either way, small or big, you need gut level courage and discipline to put your goals in order. The Bible reassures us that God wants our goals to be inspired by excellence. In the New Testament, John writes, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. 3 John 2. This was John expressing God's heart for each of us. That our souls would be happy, healthy, and whole. Apostle Paul writes in Philippians 1, 6, There is no doubt in my mind that God, who started this great work in you, would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish to the very day that Christ Jesus appears. See, God doesn't just leave us halfway through the process. When we prayerfully create God-ordained goals, he sets us up to win. He leads and guides and brings us to a flourishing finish. God is responsible for the rewards. We can goal set and submit our plans to him, but he is the giver of our blessings and can grant us our deepest desires. Excellence takes on a whole new meaning when we recognize that God wants our goals to be ordained by him. Remember, kings and queens, nothing is impossible to God. He is the standard for all excellence. It is his excellence that we must proclaim and strive to emulate. Excellence is necessary for fulfilling God's promise. So as we set goals, we have to seek his purpose rather than settling for our own preferences. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. Ephesians 3.20 He is committed to your excellence. And excellence starts on the inside. You can never be too afraid, too busy, too intimidated, or too selfless to start paying attention to your own goals. And if you've set goals and haven't seen a breakthrough, keep striving. If you haven't seen the miracle or things haven't turned out for good, don't worry. God isn't finished yet. Now that we've discovered some key ways we can jumpstart excellence in our goals, let's pursue these affirmations for the week. Say this with me. I will not live beneath my privilege. God can dream a bigger dream for me than I can ever dream for myself. Everything I am bold about, God blesses. I will align my goals with the assignments God has given me. My God-inspired goals are a sign of my faith in His promises. I will be relentless in pursuit of what God has called me to be. Kings and Queens, 
May you be fully equipped to master excellence in the world this week. Go be excellent and don't forget your crowns.